Welcome to the Church of St. Matthew in Worcester, where today, January 17th, we celebrate the second Sunday of Epiphany. Happy to welcome as our preacher today, the Bishop of our Diocese, Bishop Doug Fisher. Welcome to all, and let us pray. Good morning. Welcome to our chapel here at St. Matthew's, where we gather to celebrate the second Sunday after Epiphany. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Lord, heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of God's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now open our hearts and minds to hear God's word to us this day. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was laying down in the room. And Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, he said, here I am. And ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall speak. Speak, Lord, for my servant, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the inequities that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the inequities of Eli's house shall not be expiated by the sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said. Here I am, Eli said. What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he said to you. So Eli told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what he seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Don to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. Would you have searched me out and known me? You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from above. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me, be kind and be bold, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your words speak of my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned by day, 
One as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all my lifespan would need to be like yours. A reading from the first le letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with price, therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Let us pray with the Christ, who is within us and among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel begins with the words, The next day. Doesn't that make you wonder what happened the day before? So I read the passage before this one. And that begins with, The next day. Making me wonder what happened the day before that. I go up another paragraph. And that story begins with, The next day. I kid you not. Look up chapter 1 of John's Gospel. So I go to the previous paragraph, and that doesn't begin with the next day. It tells the story of the Pharisees questioning John the Baptist as to who he is and what he's doing with all these baptisms. I don't think the Gospel writer John is trying to give us a precise itinerary of the life of John the Baptist and Jesus. I do think He's trying to give us a spiritual pathway in these four days. Let's explore that before going to two other next days in our lives. Day one, the Pharisees questioning John the Baptist. He says he baptizes with water, but someone else is coming after him who is greater than he is. Our spiritual journey begins with acknowledging that we are not the center of the universe. As recovery programs like rightly proclaim, there is a higher power, and it isn't me. Day two, Jesus is baptized by John. The early church reported that, but they also scandalized by it. John's baptism was for sinners. Jesus is without sin. Why did he get baptized by John? One answer is that Jesus chose to stand in line with the sinners waiting to be baptized. He stood in line with the sinners. Jesus stands with the flawed and sinful me. Day three, two disciples of John, and he had a lot of them, hear and see John point to Jesus and say, look, here is the Lamb of God. And they start walking after Jesus. They ask Jesus where he is staying. He says, come and see. He doesn't give them a location. He gives them an adventure. Joseph Campbell, a very wise author and professor, wrote, the big question is whether you are going to say yes to your adventure. 2020 and 2021 have been real clear about that. Do we dig in or do we say yes to our adventure? It's scary and life-giving as that may be. Also on day three, one of the new disciples of Jesus was Andrew. He then went and told his brother Simon, who Jesus renames Peter. Who told you about Jesus? You know, we can discover God on our own. See what we said at day one. But Jesus is a person in history. We need someone to tell us about him. We can't discover him by thinking our own thoughts. Someone needs to tell us the story. Who did that for you? And who will you tell? Day four, today's Gospel. On this day, Jesus finds Philip and calls him to follow. Philip finds Nathaniel and tells him about this man from Nazareth. Nathaniel is skeptical and says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a very small little town that was dwarfed by neighboring Sepphoris, known as the Jewel of Galilee. Big stuff happened in Sepphoris. Nothing happened in Nazareth, except a young woman named Mary said yes to her adventure with God there. And that changed the world. Where is your Nazareth? Where are the small, seeming inconsequential moments where God might be asking for our yes. Yeah, two more next days. You're watching this sermon on January 17th. But for all kinds of scheduling reasons, I'm writing it on January 7th so I can record it on January 8th with my always generous friend Eric Harris here at Christ Trinity Sheffield. It's the next day as I wrote. 
the day after a mob incited by the president staged the riot at our capital. And I don't know what will happen between January 7th and January 17th. I do know this. The Constitution kept us together. Our democracy is still functioning. Our country suffered a terrible blow. But Jesus hasn't given up. Jesus is still getting online with us sinners. Jesus is still inviting us to dream of a better world. Jesus is still inviting us to an adventure when sin and death are not the final words. Grace and resurrection are the final words. And that leads us to my concluding next day. The next day after January 17th is Martin Luther King Day. A person who was not afraid to talk about Jesus and to follow where he led. A person who said a hearty yes to his adventure. A person who joined Jesus' mission to change the world. Dr. King moved our country dramatically in the direction of civil rights. In 2020, we once again was shown how very far we have to go for racial justice. Dr. King was an awesome preacher. Instead of preaching about him, I'll quote him with passages that I think spoke to his time and also to ours. I'll just quote him and make room for the Holy Spirit in you to draw the connection to our time. The ultimate question of humankind is not where we stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where we will stand in times of challenge and controversy. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the vitriolic words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of good people. In the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Let us be inspired by the nonviolent teachings of Jesus, Thoreau, and Gandhi. Nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon because it cuts without wounding and ennobles the one who wields it. Nonviolence is a sword that heals. Unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. Right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. In the day before his death, Dr. King said this, I just want to do God's will. Let's do God's will. Let's follow Jesus in his mission of mercy, compassion, and hope. We'll do that today, tomorrow, and the next day. Amen. And now, friends, together let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, 
that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Doug, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially those to be sworn into office this week, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For David Whitaker, and for all who have died in the communion of your church, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Matthew and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our life to Christ our Lord. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now let us confess our sins to God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O oh God, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises declared to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may ever after live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Matthew, apostle and evangelist and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Lord Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. <clears throat> the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. In union, blessed Jesus, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I offer my praise and thanksgiving. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder before our concluding prayer and blessing today that because of the annual meeting beginning right after our worship this morning, we will not be distributing communion this weekend in the parking lot, but we will resume, God willing, next Sunday. Let us pray. Creator of the universe, the light of your glory shines in the darkness of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, prompt to serve you, and ever eager to follow in the steps of the one who is our true light, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Thank you for joining in prayer this morning with the community of St. Matthew the Apostle and Evangelist in South Worcester, Massachusetts. We turn now at 11 a.m. to our 2021 annual meeting on Zoom. Thanks to all and God bless. St. Matthew's serving the heart of the Commonwealth since 1871.